Hey, what's up everybody? Lately, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding speaker setups with amplifiers, what's going on with ohms, program versus peak, a lot of questions on this stuff. Setting up a PA, basically. And it can get rather confusing. Admittedly, I get confused with it sometimes as well. So, what I'm going to try to do in this video is show you just some of the bare basics. There are people out there that are going to comment on this video who know a lot more about this stuff than I do, but I'm going to try to share with you what I know. I'm going to show you a setup that I have. I'm going to show you why I've set it up this way and what I can do with this setup if I want to. So without further ado, let's do it. Well, we have to start somewhere, so we're going to start with the Crown XLS series amplifiers. I have a Crown XLS 602, which is listed right here. Now, if you look over here at the specs, it says stereo 2 ohms per channel. They don't list anything at all. And that's because they don't recommend you running it at 2 ohms per channel. Stereo 4 ohms per channel, look right here, it gives you 600 watts per side. Stereo 8 ohms per channel, 380 watts per side. And bridge mono 8 ohms, 1200 watts. Bridge mono 4 ohms, again, it doesn't give you any specs at all, which means that Crown doesn't really recommend that you run this amp bridge mono 4 ohms. So what's all this ohm stuff? Well, ohms is resistance. Not ah, forget it. Here, look. Dig, if you will, a garden hose. It's not really a garden hose. It's a vacuum cleaner tube. But let's say you're going to wash your car. You went outside, you turned on the water, and it started coming out of the hose. Well, let's say that you're washing your car. You wanted to suds up some uh, soap in a bucket, so you need a little more water pressure. What you could do is you could put your thumb over the front of this garden hose, and it, water would come out a lot faster. Now you wouldn't get as much water, but you get a lot more water pressure. That's kind of like how ohms works. It's resistance. My thumb is holding back some of the water, but the water that is coming out is coming out pretty quick. So let's say that would be like 8 ohms if we had the hose covered up about like that. Now let's say that we wanted more water. We could move our thumb over a little bit. We could get more water but we'd get less pressure. That would be kind of like 4 ohms. Now let's say we took our thumb completely off the thing and the water was just pouring out of here. That would be 0 ohms. That's how ohms works. Kind of. That's resistance anyway. And I hope that I helped you get your head around that. Now how do you get your amplifier to do 4 ohms, 8 ohms, all that kind of neat stuff? That's when we get into speaker configurations and the type of speakers that you use on your amplifier, which we're going to talk about next. This is the JBL JRX 115 two-way speaker. I have a pair of these and I really like them. You get a horn and a 15-inch woofer. I think they sound really nice. Let's look at the specifications for these speakers. Now there are a lot of numbers here and when uh, some of you new people are looking at these numbers, a lot of you will gravitate towards peak power capacity. Right here it says it's a thousand watts. Now let me just say right now that that's a number that I don't understand. If I ran anywhere near a thousand watts through my speakers, I would blow them up and probably catch them on fire. I'm sure that number exists somewhere in reality, I just don't know where. So I don't want you to pay much attention to this peak power capacity right here. What I want you to look at are a couple of other numbers. First of all, normal impedance, 8 ohms. That tells us right now that we're looking at an 8 ohm cabinet. That's very important information. The other number I want you to look at is power capacity, which is also continuous power capacity, meaning the wattage you can throw through this speaker without any distortion or any problem at all, all day and all night. They're going to sound really nice at 250 watts. The other number I want you to look at is recommended amplifier power, which right here tells us it's between 250 watts and 500 watts into 8 ohms. So a lot of you might be thinking right off the bat, if I have a speaker that's 250 watts, why would I want an amplifier any bigger than 250 watts per side to power that speaker? Well, let's look at it like this. Let's say that you went out and you bought yourself a green 1960 Chevy Impala with a big 454 engine in it and a blower. And it went really fast. 
let's say that this car needed tires. We need to think about how you're going to be using this car before you buy tires for it. Now let's say that you've decided that whenever possible, you want to take this car out on long stretches of freeway and do 120 miles an hour, just for miles and miles. Well, you're going to need to buy a tire that's speed rated to handle that. You could buy a tire that's speed rated at 120 miles an hour, but the problem with that is, every time you took that car out on those long stretches of freeway, you'd be pushing those tires to the absolute physical limitations that they gave you on the speed rating. It's probably not a very good idea. You'd be a lot better off buying yourself a tire that was rated at a much higher speed, let's say 180 miles an hour or 200 miles an hour. That way you know you'd be safe doing 120 down those long stretches of freeway tire-wise, mind you. Same thing with amplifiers. Why would you want to push your amplifier to the absolute physical limit just to power your speakers for every gig. Why not get an amplifier that's rated at 50% more power than you need? That's the logic behind it. Your amp's gonna run cooler. You could turn your amp down a little bit, but uh, at least you're not pushing your amp so hard that you're heating it up and uh, you, know, you could wear it out a lot faster that way and nobody wants to buy amplifiers. So now let's talk about how we get our amplifier to do 8 ohms and how we get it to do 4 ohms. I'm going to show you a couple of different speaker configurations with the speakers that we looked at and then I'm going to show you a configuration with some 4 ohm speakers. So according to our specs, if we ran two 8 ohm speakers on our amplifier, that would tell our amplifier to run at 8 ohms, specifically 380 watts per side at 8 ohms. If we ran two 8 ohm speakers per side on our amplifier in parallel, we would dip our amp down to 4 ohms, which would give us 600 watts per side. Or if you were working with 4 ohm speaker cabinets, all you'd have to do is run one 4 ohm speaker per side to dip your amp down to 4 ohms. So on our amplifier, you'd be running 600 watts per side at 4 ohms. So I'm no audiophile, I'm not an expert on PAs, amplifiers, or speakers. This is just some of the stuff that I've gathered over time and I'm just passing it on to you. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask them right down here. In the meantime, I hope this video helped shed some light on some of your amplifier and speaker issues. Practice and enjoy.